Hi, so this is a quick update to the wireless charger. So first of all you see I've got the scope still set up. 33% duty cycle, pulse width is 2.6 microseconds, the frequency is 125 kilohertz, peak to peak 5.5 volts. So nothing changed from the other previous wireless charger except for the charging coils. I bought some of the Worth coils, slightly more expensive, just over £9 plus fat each, but uh, they give superior results to these little ones. And I'll give you a demonstration now. So I've uh, changed the FETs, well I'm still using one. I'm still messing about with a FET driver, so there's two FETs on the board but I'm only using one. I blew up the FET driver today. So I've got the power supply running at 20 volts. Any more than that, you start getting a peak voltage off the coil at over 70 volts. And with these FETs, they're 75 volt FETs, you're likely to blow them up. So 20 volts max on the power supply. And here's the coil. So if I just show you, so all I've changed, I've got the scope coming in. So let me now connect it. I've got a 10 ohm resistor there, you don't need to have it. So if I show you, this one is perfectly tuned. I spent a while doing it. So as my other video said, you could have tuned them properly. So these are worth uh, electronic coils, I believe the German. Uh, these can handle something like 12, 12 amps, 6 or 12 amps. But anyway, give you a closer look. Right, what I've done today, the same circuit as before, but all I've done is used a high voltage FET, 75 volts, uh, from drain to source, whereas the other one was only 30, that one there. So 75 volts, so I've taken a protection diode out, and I've noticed at 20 volts we get 70 volts peak to peak from the coil, so that's the only difference, and you can see I've put it on a heatsink because we're handling more current. Right, with this worth coil, and I'll give you the number, you might actually be able to see the worth part number if you turn it upside down, but I'll give you the part number in a minute. This is a 47 nanofarad, and it tunes this really nice at 20 volts. So, 20 volts. So it's turned on at the moment, drawing 40 milliamps. So what they turned on, we're measuring the coil here. That's the supply into the coil, and then the FET's grounding it. Uh, so we're looking at that on the scope now. Right, there we go. You can see it's uh, perfectly tuned, and I'm getting good results. So that's actually reading the 20 volts that's going into it, but we're switching there at 125 kilohertz. Uh, perfectly tuned, whereas the other one was all over the place, loads of ringing and... Right, let me show you the results. What I've also done, this is a receiver for four high-speed diodes, another 47 nanofarad capacitor, uh, and a 50 volt, 470 microfarad smoothing capacitor. And now it's rectified and smoothed, uh, I'll be able to show you the current. Well, what I've done, I've turned these up sideways so you can see the distance. Can't really get the camera underneath properly, so hopefully you can see the LEDs in the background as well. So if I bring them closer together, these are actually iron cores, a lot of magnets, so they actually try and repel each other. It's difficult to keep them together without them jumping and sticking to themselves. So you can see the LEDs, those 12 volt LEDs coming on there. And what's that? That must be an inch, easily. So bring them closer. So don't forget we started at 40 milliamps, 20 volts. Now these are trying to push apart. So if I give you an example. So I think 
once you get in that like, magnetic field where they're trying to force each other apart, the LEDs actually dim a small bit. So these work happily up to that sort of distance or down to that sort of distance. It's got to be 10 mil or so, 10, 10, 12 mil. And closer, it's worse. So nice big gaps, fantastic. You can obviously turn the voltage up, uh, maybe up to 25 tops, but I wouldn't advise it. You start having a bit of diode in, and then you lose some of the voltage. Right, so that's that. If I um, wonder if I can show you the magnetic property. So I'm not touching that base. And that's just the magnet pushing it away. What I've done this time, got my meter in series with the LEDs. And this is pretty efficient. So turn the lights on so you can see it. Right, so we start at 40 milliamps on the power supply. I wonder if I can stick the LEDs up here. So I'll just move the magnets closer together. I'm not sure if I can get it all in shot. Right, so I set it up. Power supply, 20 volts, 40 milliamps, and there's the meter ready to show current. Hopefully you'll be able to see this moving in. So I'm going to blind the meter so you can't read the current. Right, so that's about an inch. It's a good inch apart at least. And you see we got 20 milliamps. Power supply's not gone up yet. Or, or 10 milliamps. So you see we're on, if I can keep it steady, 86 milliamps and the power supply is on 90. Moving in. These actually work better when they're square. So you see that 120 and the power supply is on 120. 140, power supply is on 140. And you just try and force these magnets together and the current just goes up and up and up. As I said the other day, so this is proof in the pudding, these LEDs are meant to draw 120 milliamps at 12 volts. So 230 milliamps on the power supply, 220 or nearly 220 on a meter. I'll get it in the right place. So now I'm exceeding that minimum gap and the current's dropping, but the power supply current is going up. So, so you need a good 10, 12 millimetres. So look, I'm back up, I don't know, 12 mil or so at least. And the power supply is 250, 260, and the meter is on 260, so I'm moving it away. You can see they follow, pretty much follow each other. But it's not 100% efficient because, well, A, you can't have circuits like this running 100% efficient. Uh, this power supply is running at 20 volts and I'm sure I didn't have anything like 20 volts on these LEDs but what I'll do, let's measure the DC voltage. So power, ground, Right, so that's still measuring the voltage in the capacitor. So let's see what sort of voltage we get. Just look at this top top uh, one there. So it's rectified and smooth. I wonder if I can get it all in shot again.
So that's 200 milliamps on the meter, 206, 190 on the power supply, and we've got 14 volts DC. 14.9 on the scope. So 15 volts at 256 milliamps. You can work out the wattage. And so I'm going closer now, reducing or exceeding that minimum distance. And you can see as I push it down, the voltage is dropping. So this is good. I haven't got anything to hand to measure it. That's a good 12 millimeters. So about 15.1 volts at 258 milliamps. And you can see on the power supply 250 milliamps. So the power supply is running at 20 volts, but we've only got 15 volts at the same current. So I haven't got a calculator to hand, but you can work out. So it's not 100% efficient, but it's pretty damn good. So for those, before I show you the drawing, for those of you who saw my last little gadget, I tidied it up so that was a 3 watt, 4 volt LED. So what happens with this one? Look at that. I'll probably end up blowing this LED. I wonder if I can show you sideways on so. Oh, that's well over an inch. Probably end up blowing the LED. Right, so same as before, microcontroller, PWM, 33% duty cycle, FET, 100k down across the gate, take out that diode there, don't need that anymore. The worth coil and 47 nanofarad, um, 100 volt capacitor, 100 volt minimum. Um, if you if you can't program PWM but you know how to turn a port on. I've got a little note down there. Turn a port on, delay for 2.5 microseconds, that'll give you the pulse width. Turn the port off, delay for 5.3 microseconds, and loop. That'll give you effectively 125 kilohertz, 33%. So, I'll we'll move this across. There's the two coils. Uh, worth electronic, I believe the German, final part number. Just under £10 each, so I think the others were just under £5 each, so small bit more money, but a lot more power. And there, the FETs I use 75 volt. And then the receiver, so still look no wires. And that's the receiver today. So, same worth coil, 47 nanofarad. Uh, 100, 200 volts, something like that. Four high speed diodes. I used uh, 1N5819s, the 1 amp, short T, 40 volt, uh, and a 50 volt 470 microfarad capacitor there. The capacitance doesn't need to be that big because uh, obviously it's being topped up quickly at 125 kilohertz. We're not dealing with you know 50 hertz mains or 100 hertz after it's rectified. So it's a bit, you could get away with a smaller cap if you wanted, but and you see, I think we had roughly 15 volts. So 15 volts, I could only draw up to sort of a couple of hundred milliamps. Haven't got anything else here that needs more current, but I'm sure it run easily up to half an amp or more. So it's all good. Anyway, so it's a quick update to the the other one that I showed you. So hopefully you'll like it. Thank you very much.